Alright, so I just got home from watching Fury 7, and now I think it's as good as time as ever for me to give my opinion about uh, the film. Now, first things first, what everybody remembers is the ending. Shockingly, you know, tribute to Paul Walker, um, his role in the Fast and Furious series. Um, I think that the ending to the movie really fit the purpose of Fury 7, which was to dedicate it to Paul Walker. Um, I couldn't really tell that there was a CGI of Paul, but I did feel like there were some scenes where it was more noticeable than others. Um, plot-wise, I thought it was okay. Um... Plot-wise, like I said, it was decent. I mean, it doesn't it seem redundant that all these Fast and Furious movies have been based off of a chip about that big? Fury 6, military operations, chip that big. Um, I do think the introduction to uh, Deckard Shaw, who was the main villain, was uh, kind of... I think it really tied into Fury 6. But what doesn't make sense to me is that the order that you watch these films in goes 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 3, 7. So for them to bring in Shaw's brother, um, after, if you do it by chronological order, after Han dies, I guess this kind of ties in, but it doesn't at the same time. Because now we know that Omen Shaw isn't dead, because the beginning of the movie shows him in a hospital bed, and... Deckard Shaw frequently references how they crippled him. So, Furious 8, which has been confirmed already by Vin Diesel, um, I think Owen Shaw is going to wreak some havoc in that. But I thought that, um, since it picks up after Tokyo Drift, I thought that like they left it out, almost. Um, they did have a part in the movie where Sean from Tokyo Drift uh, gives Don the necklace back. But that was it. They didn't show the race that we were all anticipating. They didn't show American muscle drifting. They didn't show um, any previous relation or future relation between uh, Sean and Dom. So that's probably history at this point. Um, but when that scene did come on, I noticed that they used the same song, and I was really proud of that. I was like, yeah, it's the same song. Um, what else? There were a lot of... Um, when Shaw... Yeah, that reminds me. When Shaw and Dom first met under the sewer where Mr. Nobody came in, Kurt Russell, and they basically played chicken, and neither one of them gave, and they crashed the two cars, like, what was the point of that? It, you need to take... A perfectly good Plymouth Roadrunner and a Maserati and just smash them. A couple of Pepsi cans just went <clears throat> and came together. Like, what was the point of that? I thought that was really anticlimactic. Um, Han's funeral was also very anticlimactic. I was like, wow, that's a, basically what drives the plot to this movie. And it was, an, it was like 30 seconds out of the whole two hours or however long the runtime was. So I was kind of disappointed about that. But, um, and Mia, she wasn't really a big part of the movie either, like she was in, uh, Fast Five, I think. Might have been, yeah, it was Fast Five, where she's, like, calculating all, like, you guys just copped out a ten-second window or something like that. She didn't really have a big part in this either. And, uh, Ramsey, in this movie, he was the hacker who created God's Eye, you know, that little chip? Yeah, I guess she was just kind of there. And then Iggy Azalea. You want to talk about unnoticed roles that were supposed to be noticed? That <laughs> that one was almost... She had like two lines in the whole movie. Where you been at, ghost girl? I heard so much... No. Be quiet. Go back to Australia. Uh, what else? That's about all I got. Um, oh, and then the... Uh, no, I'm, we're getting a little long on runtime. But that is my opinion on Fury 7. Um, if you disagree with me about any of this, leave a comment down below. Uh, that's about all I got, really. Have a good rest of the day.